Hey friends, today we're going to be looking at Ableton Wavetable, and instead of doing a deep dive, I feel like there's already a lot of really good ones on YouTube, I'm just going to show you a bunch of tips and tricks that you might not be aware of. So the first one is that you can just quickly record your own sounds and use them as wavetables. So I could just record my voice. Alright, so there's my recording of my voice, and you can just drag it, click it, and drop it into the oscillator section, and now you have... I'll play it down low. <laughs> you quickly have uh, your, own, your own unique wavetable. And this is a really great way to create unique wavetables. You know, you could... What is this going to do? Here's a little seed shaker that I have. Let's just see what happens when we record this. All right, so now I have a weird seed shaker. I'll drop it in. Yeah. See? Instant stuff. So anyway, I'm going to go back to that other sound. And let's move on to the, some of the other stuff. So you have this section of effects, okay? And they're not effects like, you know, delay and reverb. They're effects that kind of pertain to what you might want to do with an oscillator stage of a synthesizer. So, you know, the first one is FM and it's, you know, it's actually just probably a, a, an extra sign oscillator that you can tune and then add an amount to. Right, so that's kind of fun. Uh, you know, you got your classic pulse width modulation, and then you've got these modern effects, right? And one of them is wave folding, which I love wave folding. <laughs> right, so and it's it normally it's not active; it's just sitting down here. And so, you know, with that knowledge, something that you can do that's really fun is you can. I'm just gonna quickly record a note here. Here's the sound I just created. I can now record that into this section right here. Just by choosing wavetable as the input of this track, I can record it. Right, and now it's a new waveform, okay? So if I load up just a fresh wavetable, I can now take this sample that I made and I can just drag it and drop it back into wavetable and edit it further. So now I have... Feel me? So you can just instantly resample over and over and over again and, and, and really get creative with this. So anyway, I'm just going to drop my original voice sample back in here for the fun of it. Okay. So the next thing I want to show you is the matrix view, which is this page right here. So this page is, is pretty cool in that it kind of acts the same way that automation lanes act in, in Ableton. Uh, you can just click on the parameter that you want to edit and it will appear in this area. So warp maybe. If you click on it and move it, you, you get it in the matrix, which is really, really awesome. It's really fast. So in this case, let's look at the LFOs. I'm just going to do a classic, add an LFO to the, os to the oscillator's position, which is a classic wavetable move. Just morphing through that, right? If I look at the LFO, though, I can also sync it to the clock. There's this little note here, and it says the rate is an eighth, so now we get... Okay, so maybe I'll... I'll leave that where it is, and then I'll go to LFO2. I'll also sync it, but make it slower, like... Yeah, one one sounds good. Okay, so... So, I just clicked on warp, okay? And it magically appeared in the matrix. So now I can just change this a little bit, and I get... And what I'm doing is I'm getting somewhat of a rhythm going, right? In fact, let's make that even more... Another thing you can do is just click on the... In the matrix, you can click on these various targets, and they'll just come up. So I'll click on the first target. I'm going to slow this down a little bit. So you can start to feel maybe this is like a rhythm starting to appear. If I start to make these edges a little more... A little more hard, you're going to get these different kinds of uh, sounds going, these rhythmic sounds. So syncing the LFOs to the clock can, can get you a lot of really fun rhythms starting. So. Right? <laughs> so something else we can do is here is another really interesting thing. You have a slow attack, you have an attack stage where you can make the LFO open up slowly. So let's say you've established one of these rhythms, you can get this kind of, you know, 
uh, like slow establishing of the rhythm over time. Let's hear that again. Maybe I want to slow it down a little bit. Hit it again. Right? That's kind of fun. So the next thing is you might find this interface a little bit fiddly. You know, there's a lot to look at. There's so many. There's just pages and menus within pages. You can also just click up and if you hit the up arrow you get all of your you get all of your modulation targets right in one spot how cool is that so so that's pretty fun and you can also if you keep dragging this up you eventually get the oscillator sections here as well okay so you just really have a lot of you have an ability to really look at almost everything you'd, you'd want to look at all at once and it also makes the modulation page expand into the MIDI parameters which is you know something something I want to get into next if you have this expanded you're looking at this page if you don't have it expanded all you have to do is click on MIDI so you might be wondering you know okay what can I do with the MIDI section well these these are all your standard kind of MIDI thing. So let's say we wanted to make this velocity very velocity sensitive. I would just turn, you know, the the amp stage velocity all the way up. So if I play real quiet, I get quiet notes. If I play loud, I get loud notes. Something that's hidden in here is the random. So random is cool. This is for every single note that happens, you're going to have a random value generated. Okay, and you can map that to different things. So maybe we'll we'll map that to the panning. So now we're going to have 100% random panning for every time I hit a note. Right? That's cool. So I'm going to turn that random off for now. Um, something else that I wanted to look at is the unison mode. So these are really cool. The, this is something that, you know, you might think of Wavetable as like a quick and dirty serum. And in a lot of ways it is. But something that I feel like makes it stand out are these really fun uh, different unison modes. So your classic unison mode, all that it does is just detunes the oscillators and pans them wide. So you get that, you know, super deep sound. Shimmer's cool though. It starts to offset the position of each one of these voices that you're making as well as detune them. Noise is cool because it kind of like, it offsets the beginning and ends of them and it kind of makes it sound noisier. So, you know, it's a good way to add some grit, right? Phase sync kind of gives you that like all pass filter kind of sound. Kind of a hard to achieve sound. This is a really useful one. Position spread, it just changes and slightly detunes the positions of each one of the voices. So you get a lot of variance here. It's huge sounds, it's awesome. And you also have random note. So I, I feel like all these different modes is really set, set wavetable apart from the other ones. Yeah, so that's fun. I'm gonna leave it on I really like the face. <laughs> That's awesome. So up until now, we haven't messed around with the filter at all. And this filter is actually really robust. There's a lot going on here. There's basically, first of all, there's two of them, right? So you have your, you know, if you just leave it uh, on its vanilla setting, you have a, you have a 12 or 24 uh, low pass filter, right? Classic, classic filter. Um, if you click on the down arrow, you get the, you get the different modes. So you get like the, the drive amounts, so you can get some distortion into this thing. <laughs> Woo, a little bit loud, sorry about that. So that's a little bit, uh, you know, you can get a little bit more dirt in there. Another thing that's really rad about these filters is that you can choose this morphing mode, which is really, really cool. So, you know, Wavetable is all based around these morphing sounds, so why stop at the oscillator section? You can also change this kind of, you know, this this morphing amount. And what this does is this, it morphs between the different styles of filters that you can use. So in this case, also it, it appears as a, ma as a modulation matrix destination. So maybe I'll turn some of these LFOs down a little bit um, and I'll add that to the filter morph. I'll turn this back up a little bit. That's cool. And so the advantage of having two filters is that, you know, in this case, we still have a lot of high end material. So I can turn on the second one and use it as maybe a low pass filter and get some of the very top end out of there. <laughs> Or I could make it another filter and I could make that morph a complete <laughs> morphed by the other LFO. Mm -hmm. 
That's a fun rhythm. So yeah, you know, the, the advantage of these filters is you have all the different modes available to them. If I make this a normal low-pass filter, and I choose one of these different modes, I also have drive. So I can add some grit. Now another thing about these filters that's cool is that there's a parallel mode, meaning that both the filters will run with the full signal of the oscillators coming through to each one of them. And then my favorite mode is this split mode. This is cool. So it sends the first oscillator through the first filter and the second oscillator, if you have something going on it, through the second one. So I'll turn the second one on and just make it, I'll just make it a square. And then also it, it you can use the sub, which if you didn't know, you could just turn the, this sub on here and it will split the sub between both filters. So I'm gonna turn this square down. Maybe we'll add a little bit of movement to this filter. And so yeah, if you if you switch around between these, you can get some different sounds. So yeah, the, the last thing I want to show you is what's under the hood of these envelopes. And so I'm just going to grab my first recording of me again. And I'm just going to go to the matrix and add a little bit of movement. So I just have a, a droning sound. Now, in, if I click on envelope 2, I get this view. And I can change this envelope around. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it a short, snappy envelope. You can't hear it yet because I haven't mapped it to anything, right? I, I could also do that with the amp stage, but I'm just looking at envelope 2. So what I can do is I can now go into the matrix, okay? and I can choose something that I want to map it to. So maybe I'll just do the, the volume. What I can do is add that to this envelope, and now I get, right? But if I choose loop, it'll keep going. If I open the decay, it'll be longer. If I close it, it'll be short. I'm going to turn it up. Right. Okay, so now, now that I'm changing the decay rate, I'm moving it around. If I look at the matrix, boom, there it is, right? It appears. So if I go to this first LFO, maybe I'll slow it down a little bit. If I go to envelope 2 and I click on the decay rate, I can look at the matrix and I can just add it to LFO 1. And now I'm making this kind of like flowing and changing uh, rhythm. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you like this kind of stuff, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Check you out later. Bye.